Good morning and welcome to Let's Learn. This is T-Pain speaking and I am going to be teaching you all about Python. And with this series of tutorials, um, I'm going to actually be covering a whole bunch of topics ranging from the very basics to advanced topics later on down the line. And what I want is for you to follow along with me and work with me as we do this because that is how you're going to get the most out of this. First, let's, uh, I'll go through a whole bunch of theory and explain this to you, and then we'll start diving right in. So first of all, what is Python? Uh, Python is a flexible programming language. So why learn it? It can do so much. It's free. Uh, it works on Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, you can build custom scripts for Maya, Motion Builder, Nuke. They all support it. You can go into game development with it. You can bind it to user interfaces for tool development. You can script everyday tasks for the web, for file organization, for Excel even if you wanted to. It has so much potential. It's easy to learn and it looks really good on your resume. Okay, so where you download it? You download it here on python.org slash get it. So the version that we're going to be working with is 2.7.3, and you can find that below 3.3 um, right here. And uh, it's free to download, and it plugs right into just about any platform you need. So where to get help? Um, if you're ever like at all ha struggling with Python, just start uh, searching on Google with Python and then whatever your problem is, whether it be sign, um, you're looking for signs then boom, you can go into mathematical functions. Um, there's tons of forums on Stack Overflow dedicated to Python. Look there. So after you download and install Python, uh, you should install it in the main directory. Uh, uh, the C drive was mine, and it's going to be right here under Python 2.7. And then if you want to, you can follow along with uh, python.exe, which will open up the command line um, or the terminal if you're on Mac. Or you can open up idle, which is what uh, I'm going to be using. Um, and it comes built right in when you install Python. All right, so here we are in idle. So variables are containers for any kind of data. So I want you to type in var, V-A-R equals 5. Enter. Okay? This is your way of assigning a variable. You type in first whatever you want to name it, then an equal sign, and then the value you wish to store. So if I type var, enter, it outputs 5, the value I have assigned to it. So now that value is bound to that variable. I can assign any uh, number of types of variables, which we will get into later, um, but for now we're just going to work with integers. So I can name it anything... I want and it will stick. I can name in uh, uh, just a whole bunch of garbage like SDF SDF equals five equals four and if I punch in th that again that value will be spit back out. Now this is where naming is very important. Um, you want to be as explicit as possible with your naming. Um, meanwhile like uh, uh, being uh, pay attention to the capitalization. For uh, one of my preferences, and a uh, preference I've seen for a lot of Python programmers, is variables start off lowercase for the first word and then capitalize the, s the first letter of the next word. So if I were to type uh, big foot, that's exactly how I type it. Bit, lowercase big, uppercase F, and then lowercase ut equals four. So I want you to type in big foot. Four. This is a good practice to get into. Um, and then type it again to make sure that it, the value is stuck. Be careful not to include any spaces in your variable names. So big foot could uh, type in big space foot equals 5 or 35 or whatever. And you'll notice you get a syntax error. And what this means is that uh, uh, there is some sort of error that like in the way you typed it in. And uh, the reason being is because I included that space in between big and foot. So go ahead and try that one more time. Big foot with a space in between equals 56, whatever. Um, and you'll get that same error. So don't include spaces. Um, instead, just capitalize the first letter of every other word. So big foot equals four. There we go. 
Excellent work. So we know that uh, we can assign values with the equal sign. Now we can also reassign values with the equal sign. So I'm going to go ahead and say big capital F ut is equal to seven. And I'm going to type big foot again. Go ahead and try that yourself. Type in big capital F ut <laughs> big foot um, is equal to seven and then type it again. And you'll see that the value is reassigned. All right, now we're going to begin on one of my favorite topics, math. So Python has a, a built-in math function that you can just punch right in. So let's type in 5 plus 5. What do you think is going to happen? 10. Good job. You guessed correctly. Um, it actually will spit out the answer depending on what it is. So I can do like 2 plus uh, 4 or 4 plus 6 and it will give me the answers. You can also do um, 4 minus, you can do the standard math operations. Um, you can do multiplication, and it'll figure it out. I want you to try out a couple different math operations. The plus, the addition, the subtraction, division, and multiplication. Star is for multiplication, so we can go 32 times 32. Enter. Try that. 32 divided by 32. Try that. Now, we're going to get into something that is very important. Um, what I want you to do now is type in 3 divided by 2. What do you think is going to happen? All right. 3 divided by 2, if you were to punch it into a calculator, would be 1.5. But here, it punched out 1. It returned a value of 1. Now, what's going on is... It's interpreting the values as integer values. Integers um, are simply numbers without decimal points. They're whole numbers. Floating values or floating point values are numbers that have a decimal point somewhere in the value. Thus, the name floating point is the dot can be anywhere in the value. So go ahead and try that real quick. Type in 100.0, enter. And you'll see that it sticks out that point zero at the end. That's its way of saying, hey, I know this is a floating point value. Try just typing 100 now. And you'll see that there is no decimal point. Note that it maintains the point zero at the end of it. This is the difference between integers and floating points. So now let's try that 3 divided by 2 again. But this time we're going to go 3 divided by 2, point zero. Enter. And now we get the correct answer. This is the difference between integers and floating points. Um, if uh, Python is given one value that's a floating point, it'll convert everything else to a floating point, or it'll try its best. Um, it's best to uh, explicitly say it's a floating point by adding a point zero um, at the end of it, if you can. Another way you can do that is we can actually uh, punch in um, a, a explicit conversion of integers to floats. And the way you do that is you type float, parentheses, three, close parentheses, divided by two. And now it'll convert one of those values. It'll convert the three to a floating point value. And it'll stick. So try that. Try punching in float, parentheses, five, close parentheses, divided by four. Enter. And now we get 1.25, which is the correct answer. The same can be done in the reverse. So we typed in float, open close parentheses, to convert an integer or some value into a floating point value. Okay? So we can also do the same of converting a float back to an integer value using int, open close parentheses, with 3.0 inside. Type that. And now we have a integer value returned. So int, open, close parentheses. So this is how you solve for rounding errors. Some other math operations you may want to know about is the remainder. And the way you use that is you type in 5 percent sign 4. So go ahead and type that in. And then press enter. So what this is saying is how much remains after I take in uh, take out a whole bunch of number fours out of five. 
one remains. So another example of this would be uh, uh, like if I were to punch in 10 percent sign 5. Go ahead and type that in. And what you get out is 0 because 10 is divisible by 5. Go ahead and type 11 percent 5 and you'll be spit out one. It's because one overflows. So the remainder is very useful for when you're doing loops and uh, a number of other operations we'll do down the road. So next we're gonna learn about powers and my favorite way to assign power values is using star star. So we're gonna type 12 star star two, enter. And now we get 144, that's 12 squared because we just assigned the square value. And you can assign this for uh, uh, square roots as well. So I'm going to type in um, 16 star star 0 0.5. Go ahead and type that in. Press enter. So again, take note that it converts everything to a floating point value when a floating point value is passed in. So we get out 4.0, which is the square root of 16. Perfect. So back in algebra, you may have learned that you can use parentheses to close off specific parts of the algebra. The same works in programming. So if I type five times parentheses five plus five, close parentheses, enter, it works the exact same. It adds the two fives first that are closed within the parentheses and then multiplies them by the other five. And so we end up with 50. So it's 10 times 5 is 50. So parentheses work the exact same. So there's a number of other math functions that you can use, like the absolute value, sine value, cosine value, floor, ceiling, um, etc. Uh, from the math import section. All right, guys, great job keeping up today. You did an excellent work. All right, so here are some examples for you. I want you to discover for yourself what they actually do. A lot of the greatest programming comes out of curiosity. So be curious. If you like the video or have any questions, please leave me a comment. I'll be sure to get back to them when I can. Also, be sure to subscribe and check out my Facebook link below.